Hey folks, wanted to share with you an amazing new tool developed by AWS that has completely changed the way that I interact with my AWS resources and increased the speed in which I can prototype new projects. And so what this tool allows you to do is to use an LLM and describe to it using natural language different actions that you would like to take on your AWS account. This can be read operations, this could be update operations, it could be create operations as well, or even delete, but I wouldn't suggest that for reasons I'll get to in a little bit. So let me show you this in action before describing how this thing works and how you can get started. And so I'm over here in cursor, which is my AI IDE of choice. Uh, so I opened up the, the chat window here. What am I gonna tell the agent to do? I already have it installed by the way, is I want it to tell it to list my S3 buckets in my account. And I'm just gonna press enter there. So you can see that it's calling an AWS companion tool here and it's listing out all of the S3 buckets that I have and the dates that correspond to them as well. So using this tool, you can essentially interact with any AWS CLI command. Any AWS CLI command that exists, this tool will be capable of calling it. Uh, you can also do things like create a new S3 bucket. So let's say create a new S3 bucket called AWS uh, MCP demo. And hopefully that's not taken. So let's just add a little bit of extra characters at the end here and see what it comes up with. So you can see it's calling an AWS uh, S3 API here. Perfect, it successfully created the bucket here. So AWS MCP demo XYZ. Um, and so if you were to do a similar thing without this MCP server installed, you basically just get a command, but it wouldn't be able to actually run the command on your behalf. And that's the whole point of this feature, okay? So hopefully you can understand how useful this thing is. Instead of having to go to the AWS console to click around, change configuration of things, uh, you can basically do this in natural language, just describing to it as you would like talking to another person. And so let me uh, explain to you how this thing works so that if you're interested in getting started with this tool, you can go ahead and do that. So first of all, some prerequisites. So you do need an IDE that supports MCP servers. Now, for those of you that aren't completely down the rabbit hole of the AI world, uh, what an MCP server allows you to do is it allows an AI or an LLM agent to interact with external sources. And these external sources could be an API, it could be your local file system, it could be basically any Anything. The problem with LLMs is that typically they only have access to data that they were trained on. Now with MCP servers, you can acquire all this data that exists outside of that training data set so the AI can make much better decisions. And so in order to do that, you need one of these different IDEs here. And there may be more that are supported by the time you watch this video, um, but this landscape is changing very, very quickly. So Cursor is the one that I use that I prefer to use a lot. It's very handy, although there, it does cost money if you want to go with a paid version once all your uh, credits run out. Amazon Q is completely free and it integrates with a lot of different IDEs. So you can go ahead and use that if you'd like. Uh, then there's Claude Code, which is kind of a relatively new thing. Uh, and JetBrains, any of the JetBrains IDEs, so IntelliJ, PyCharm, uh, RubyMine, all of those are supported as well. So let me explain to you how this thing works because it's a little bit confusing. There's gonna be a little bit of a new terminology here if you are not uh, well-versed in the world of AI. So let's start with the beginning. What's the first thing that you do as a user? So you're gonna to describe to your cursor um, kind of chat window uh, exactly what you want to do. Maybe you tell it that you wanna list S3 buckets, maybe it's create uh, a new piece of infrastructure. Maybe you wanted to evaluate why something is broken and not working properly. You put your prompt in here and that's the, the first step, right? So that you can tell Cursor exactly what you want. And so how does Cursor know, or how is it capable of calling or interacting with AWS? So the key lies in the AWS MCP server, like we were just talking about. And what the MCP server's implementation contains, uh, two commands that are important, but there's also a third that's not relevant. The first one is called suggest AWS commands. This is used if the LLM itself is not sure what um, CLI command it wants to run. So this is kind of like a fallback thing. It's not used all the time, but it's there just in case it needs further clarification. Now the call AWS tool, this is the one that's actually important. And what this allows you to do is assume that cursor was able to generate a um, CLI command as a result of the prompt that you put in, like create an S3 bucket, for example. It will generate that CLI command and send it to this tool on your MCP server. 
This tool is then configured to run that command against your terminal. Okay, and so to open up an instance of PowerShell or Bash or whatever you're using, and it will use that command from the AWS CLI, which also means that it piggybacks off of the credentials that you have configured on your profile. So this is a little bit of an important point because if you have administrator access here, then basically the LLM can do whatever it wants. It can delete stuff, it can update stuff, uh, it can go off the rails and go crazy. But I have some tips a little bit later on to give you so that you can navigate this as well. You can probably guess what I'm about to say. But anyways, once that CLI command is generated and provided to your terminal, then the terminal uh, will execute on the AWS cloud. Those results will be sent back to your terminal. That'll go back here to the tool and that gets returned all the way back to cursor. And then it finally comes back to you at the end. And then if there's any kind of um, follow-ups that are needed, the LLM will decide that and prompt you for additional things. So that's what's happening behind the scenes. Pretty simple, but um, it's piggybacking off this, this MCP context model, which is called a model context protocol. Fairly new thing. Uh, I'm probably going to make a video on this to describe it a little bit more. Uh, but this is basically the future of where things are going in how, in terms of how um, LLMs or AI is going to be able to access external data sources and do things outside of the context of their own kind of training world. Anyways, let me give you a couple tips now that I've discovered uh, as I've been using this thing just to save you for some, from some headaches that I've had. Um, so the first one, and yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about before. You're going to want to use a restrictive IAM policy. And the reason is that the LLM typically will operate and do the correct things, use the right commands, but there's no guarantee that it's not going to like go off the rails and do something that you wouldn't expect. And so to prevent that from happening, you should have a secondary profile set up uh, with just read access or possibly even update depending on how, on how crazy you want to get. Um, but use a, a more restrictive IAM policy than what you would normally use with a user that's configured on your AWS CLI. So that's number one. Uh, the second one is that you really want to provide specific instructions. If you leave it ambiguous, what can end up happening is that uh, the LLM can run commands, a lot of commands in certain cases that can take a long time to return. And the reason I say this is because if you already know what you want the, the LLM to do and you're sure an API already exists, just just tell it what you want it to do in plain English and it'll do it. If you leave it very vague and ambiguous, you'll leave it up to the LLM to figure it out, which in some cases can generate the wrong response. So be specific if you know the answer and if you don't, then feel free to leave it ambiguous and it should be able to figure it out for you with a couple more cycles. And my final one is, and this is kind of a neat little tip as well, which is that after you've created resources or updated things manually, you can ask the LLM to generate the CDK code or CloudFormation or Terraform, whatever um, IEC that you use based on what you, the operations that you just did in the text box, in the chat text box. Very, very handy if you want to go from, you know, rapid prototyping in your IDE to now like I want this thing to be more kind of production ready. So give me a template so that I can deploy it all out to the cloud and get it ready for my Git commit, for example. And so uh, if you want to get started with this, you can go over to the GitHub website right here. So the name of the package is called, uh, it's under AWS lab slash MCP. And they have a installation guide here if you scroll down a little bit. So available MCP servers, quick installation. You're gonna want this one here, which is called the AWS API MCP server. Uh, you can either one click install to get this on cursor, same thing for VS code, or if you go into this, uh, and you scroll down, there should be, yeah, there's some very specific installation instructions if you're on Mac or Linux or whatever you're on. And so, yeah, I've been really happy with this tool so far. And I have to say, I was a little bit reluctant to jump on the AI bandwagon, but after a couple weekends of diving into it, I'm a lot more motivated now uh, since I recognize kind of the power and the capability of these kinds of tools. Um, this AWS MCP thing is just scratching the surface of what's possible, but I fully expect this to get even more developed in the future and enhancements to be made continuously. So get ahead of it now, embrace this stuff, even though you may be a little bit skeptical, um, it's not going away and it's just gonna get more prevalent in our day-to-day -day lives. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.